Welcome to Swish and Flick, an all Potter podcast. Swish and Flick, everyone. The Swish and Flick. Hello and welcome to episode 23 of Swish and Flick. I'm Tiffany. I'm Megan. I'm Katie. And I'm Sarah. And this episode is sponsored by Jessica Mosher. So thank you for supporting us, Jessica. Thank you. Yes. And welcome to the start of a brand new book. Yay! Yay! Boo. <laughs> <laughs> Today we are discussing chapter one of Harry Potter in the Chamber of Secrets. It looks so weird to see that. I the know. Worst oh, I'm like, God, I'm like, something looks weird. Why is it there a scene? I know. It, I hope I don't mess up, you know, when I intro this and I'm going to be like, Sorcerer's <laughs> Stone. No, we're not on Sorcerer's we'll Stone. We'll kick you out. So this chapter is called The Worst Birthday. So make sure you've read the chapter and you're ready to dive into the details. We have some weekly profits today. Megan. Profits. profits. What do you have for us today? I do. I have fun and exciting news. Nah. Because, no, it is. It's about her child. It is. <laughs> I actually am excited about this. So you know how we all tried and desperately failed, horribly failed <laughs> getting <laughs> tickets to the first round of release for Cursed Child in New York. Um, but they are releasing more tickets in February. And what is cool is that these aren't tickets for shows like after the ones that were released. They're like releasing tickets for performances in March. So it's yeah. like, that's pretty cool. It's not like it's, you know, going to be months and months down the road. It's pretty quick. Yeah. So it's going to be for performances, cover, uh, covering performances from March 16th to March 9th of 2019. So like a whole year's worth of tickets are going to be released. So we have a good chance, right? I hope so. One would think. It says, Wait, say that again. March, like so from 16th? this March until the next March? Yeah. yeah. Oh. They're releasing tickets. Okay. I believe yeah. that March, um, like March to April is actually their like... What's the word like I'm looking for? Like their season? Run, debut? No, like March is their like practice one. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. You know what I mean? They're like, yeah. it's not, I don't think it's actually debuting till April or something. I, I don't know. I could totally be making that up, but that's what I remember reading sometime. Mm. Um, so th- you're going to have to do the whole Ticketmaster verified thing over again. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you'll get a code just like before. It's going to be the same process, but I'm hoping that they figure it out because honestly there were like... I hardly knew anybody who even got a code to purchase yeah. tickets. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I yeah, think a few, few people, people, I think a few people told us that they got it, but it was like three. out of the whole group. Yeah. 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 It was only Not like, many. yeah, two or three. Yeah. And even like other podcasts that I follow and other Harry Potter pages that I follow, like very few people in them. And you'd think that's where like a huge congregation mm-hmm. of obviously Harry Potter fans are going to be talking together and, yeah. and, and like hardly anybody got tickets Ugh. from what I know. So Come on, hopefully, people. We will. I wonder when it'll jump off Gibson. Broadway. I don't know if it will because you don't think so. From what I've heard about the show, I mean, I've never seen it, but from what I've heard is that it's very, um, it's very involved with like how the stage is set up mm. and um, mm. to travel would be very cumbersome. Like they're completely like this theater that they're going to in New York. I mean, they like gutted it and are like redoing the whole setup of it because it didn't work the way that it was to do Cursed Child. That's, that's mm. crazy. So I feel like it's going to be there for a while. Yeah. I'm well, it's going to be that. there for a full year. Yeah. At least. I mean. And the OG cast, right? Yeah. That's are they going to be there go. the whole time? Probably well, not. Well, uh, usually it's like a year contract. Really? At a time. Really? That long? I don't know anything don't, about... Uh, yeah, the because they just show. they just ended their stint in London, and it's been about a year and a half. Yeah, I they're think, all almost. from there. Yeah, but they, they didn't. They got <laughs> other. They got other cast members to do parts. But it would like alternate. Like I mean, yeah, they would have some days off because that's how it is. Even whenever they're traveling, like, I feel like that would be super alternate or whatever. But yeah. for the most part, all the performances they did all of them mm-hmm. for like a year at least. Dang, from what I know. God, all right, so we'll hopefully. Yeah. You know, we'll get that done. I feel like we have a better <laughs> shot this time. <coughs> so, we'll I'm sick, Felix. so I'm sorry that I sound like a man. Yeah. We'll see if the luck of the Irish is outside. You don't sound that bad. True you sound better than you did morning, this morning. Ooh. I sound like She was yeah. like, <laughs> And you were like, oh, cool, I get to podcast with this voice. <laughs> My throat feels a little scratchy, too, like almost like I'm getting a sore throat, but I feel like it's because the air is so dry slash yeah, the weather change. Yeah, I don't know where this changed. just, like, came out of nowhere. I don't Guys. feel sick. Stay yeah, I don't feel me, sick either. I don't feel sick either. It's just like I'm gonna breathe it's just all over there. You. Ugh. 
<laughs> You're sick. So yeah, that's my weekly profit. That's what I got. Excuse me. Is that me. all you have? There was profits. Oh, there's another one. Mm-hmm. Do you Does, tell? Do you want me to? Yeah. Since You're, I'm the weekly it's profiter. It's your thing. Profiter. <laughs> Guys, we have some exciting news. And we're probably going to have already posted this on our Facebook page. Oh, 100%. For, no, we will. But for, people, <laughs> but for people that don't follow us on Facebook or social media, we're going to have a little swish and flicker on the way. <laughs> <laughs> One, it's not mine. Two, don't call it this. <laughs> a little swisher. A little swisher. A little swisher. I am with child. That being yeah. Tiffany. This is Tiffany, if you don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they get our voices mixed up. I, get a I am babe. not with child. I got Should, a little babe. Yeah, I guess Katie and I are the same. And <laughs> Should I and tell them how? Yeah. So if people don't yeah, already know, them. Tiffany and I, she's married to my brother, so the child is going to be my niece or nephew. But I got to tell Megan and Katie, and I am a person oh, that kind of likes to play practical person. jokes. She so did it they, the cruelest way possible. They came over after they had a, they were uh, away for a week, and we were going to look at is Halloween time. We were mm-hmm. going to go look at this Halloween house by um, Marty or T- Marty and Tiffany's house. And so they came in and. Um, Tiffany knew I was going to do this because she okayed it and my <laughs> other sister was with us and so she already knew and w- knew about it and so like we all had parts to play and so I said to Megan I go I, I have to talk to you about something I did it really serious and mind you Megan's known me very, for a very long time so she's like at first I thought you were kidding like because she just goes what are you telling me I'm quitting or you're quitting and I was like well I'm like we'll wait till Katie comes back from the bathroom and so then I like made a joke I'm like I just hate awkward situations and I did like an awkward chuckle she it like, was really good guys she was so convincing like was, like she like, said like I know her so well so I can usually <laughs> tell when she's trying to pull like a prank on me guys it was award worthy it was amazing it was well, really yeah it was like and an so, Oscar Megan is immediately yeah. silent, so Katie comes back. Uh, and I believe I'm like the verge of tears. Yeah, she looked like she was going to start to cry. And it I was, was like, really I, mean. I basically was like, guys, I'm like, I, I'm just going to be, I'm worried because the next couple of months I'm going to be gaining a lot of responsibility and I, I'm going to, money's going to be tight and you know, I just don't know if I'm going to be able to do this because I'm going to become an aunt. And then like immediately they were like, what? And then, like, <laughs> and then they looked at Tiffany. So yeah, this was all the way back by around and Halloween yeah, time. Yeah. And then I got to do the October 30th. Yeah. I think. Yeah. yeah. And then I got to do it again. <laughs> I told our friends from second breakfast that, uh, I was quitting and they yeah. seemed very concerned. Sarah, I just like doing that to Sarah, people. Sarah, I was like, I'm, I'm quitting nothing. swish and flick. And I'm like, I wanted to wait to tell you guys because I wanted to talk to Megan and Katie first. And, you know, I just don't want you guys to be disappointed because really they helped us start our everything. So, and then I was like, because Tiffany's pregnant. And they're like, <laughs> what? <laughs> it's great. So yeah, coming June, coming in June. A Exciting mini stuff. Hub. So we're going to have to bulk some episodes. Yeah. Oh yeah. But uh, we're recording at my house now, so it's going to be a lot easier. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, we've we made the move made and the what's move. what's sad is once she has the kid she's never going to be able to hold it because i think myself because <laughs> a, i'm going to be the child's favorite aunt putting the stamp on it right now even though it is more than one aunt <laughs> and two megan is going to want to have baby snuggles but i'm going to make sure she doesn't get you're going to give me for real baby fever tiffany <laughs> i'm so Sorry. excited so we're excited everyone's excited i think you were never mind We'll be done. Moving on <laughs> to the recap. Re- 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 recap. <laughs> How do I follow up that though? Come you on, you can't. I can't. So I'll just, <laughs> I'll just go. So last episode, Tiffany and Sarah got together on their own, and they discussed a few of their favorite things. So they talked about their favorite book, their favorite movie, actor and act- actresses, and some of their favorite creatures. Guys, it's been like. A long time since we've. It's recorded. been a long time. I know. Yeah, it's nice to get back in the swing of things. Mm-hmm. It really is. Yeah, back really into is. the routine. Yes. Yeah. Oops. Feels good to podcast. Oh yeah. With everybody again. Even on Christmas weekend. I hate. Is, yeah. I, right now. I hate it's, it all. Uh, that's when family gets together and we fam. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. Let's move to the summary. Are you well, okay? All right. We'll see if I can read. <laughs> oh, we'll, see if, we'll see if this new, break has given me any. Uh, is it new book, new Sarah? We'll oh, see. Oh. <laughs> All right. It's Harry's 12th birthday, and he's feeling lonelier than ever. His family seems to be more concerned with hosting a dinner party for Vernon's business associate than Harry himself. Harry feels cut off from the wizarding world, and after poking the bear using fake magic, <laughs> he spends his birthday doing ridiculous chores and is sent to his room with little food, where he won't be seen for dinner. He has an unexpected guest waiting for him in his room. 
Sarah, that was so good. That was you amazing. Didn't mess up once. Thanks. And you wrote a very nice condensed summary. It was good. It was very good. <laughs> I try. I want to take some credit in this because I made an edit when I was looking at the doc earlier. What, what did, did you, you do? It just said he was feeling lonely than ever, so I made it lonelier. Oh. Why Welcome. didn't anybody want to talk about what I added to that? <laughs> that's even better. <laughs> I don't know who Bud is. <laughs> that's that's bold face lie. <laughs> Bud. Bud. Bud All right. News. All right. So we start our chapter with an argument over breakfast. <sighs> Because Hedwig's been hooting around in her cage. And she's essentially trapped all the time. Do they always have arguments over breakfast? I mean, I yeah. think it's just a tumultuous or a meal. Well, it's just mornings. The Dursleys, the Dursleys like food. It's probably when they're all together anyways. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Like Harry so probably tries happen. to stay out of yeah, I'm sure Harry's way. nowhere near them whenever it's like not meal time or something. You would yeah. think that he wouldn't want to be around well, a around them anyways, well, but like especially around me. meals, like people get feisty around their food. I personally, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I <laughs> Tiffany doesn't share food. <laughs> yeah, I'm like really hungry. No. Do you think that they ate sausages for breakfast? Probably. Not in this one. We'll find out. Um, <laughs> no, but I wrote that this is animal abuse. I you agree. can't get yeah. a bird yes. locked in a cage all the time without being able to fly. Well, I think that you could say that with most animals, unless they're supposed to be like in a cage, like a fish. You know what I mean? Like a dog keeping a dog in a cage. Yeah, it's, it's just, just mean. Not right. No, like. Yeah. No, and I, ugh, it just makes me angry. I agree. It's sad because, like, she's so used to being in the owlery where, mm-hmm. like, obviously she has a place where she can go and, like, rest. And and spread she's, your like, wings free by rain there, too. Yeah. But she can leave at any time. Right. This is her ugh. probably first experience because she doesn't know how the Dursleys are because she wasn't with Harry last well, s- summer. Well, she was for a couple weeks, right? Because, yeah. Yeah. I guess. Right. But, but like, he must have but, been like, were they locked up? up? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I would imagine. I don't know. Hedwig Either way. Up. Before he went to school, she wasn't. No, it never I think said it, anything. I think it mentioned that she would bring Harry mice every oh, now and then. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right, you're right. Um, Vernon is just... Ugh. He's Vernon. So he, like, is, he doesn't want her to, like, fly around because they're so obsessed with being normal. He's like, someone's going to see her, like... And then all of a sudden there's this owl coming to their house. I mean, if anything, at least let her leave at night. Yeah, but yeah. they're dumb. Because <laughs> realistically, like the only time you ever hear them talking about owls, like them being muggles, mm-hmm. is when it, Voldemort was defeated and all the owls like during the day. Right. So like I think that even normally they aren't out a lot. Even you know. I've only ever seen an owl like in real life in the wild once. Me oh too. no, it was I've that seen. Night. I uh, saw them same, but yeah. it was during the day. Oh, it's actually a really cool story. My um, dad has a pontoon boat, and so they would go to the spot to fish, and it was by, like, the edge of the pond. And one day they saw this owl just, like, sitting in this tree. So they caught, like, a super tiny, tiny fish, and so they threw it, and she came down and got it. And then the next time they went over to the back same spot, she was there. And so they did this over and over, and they would throw her the little tiny fish. My aunt went on one day and took a picture of the owl. When that's I go, cool. when I, then it's up at my parents' house. So when I go home, I'll take a picture of it and I'll that's put it That's awesome. Yeah. That's sweet. I've seen owls outside my house the one day. So that's sometimes awesome. with my job, I have to work crazy early hours. Mm. Um, and I was going to work the one day. My mom left first and it was like six o'clock in the morning and birds freaked me out a little bit, but I was like, oh, there's two owls in the tree, which I had never seen before. Are you delivering your letters and then you just like, no. and you just left, left. <sighs> Jeez. No, they didn't give me any letters. I'm no surprised letters. that we don't oh, see more by our house because we're surrounded by like a little patch of woods. I saw one when I was working for Disney. It was just by yeah, one same. of the rides at night. That's yeah, that's where I saw I it too, I saw but like a different time yeah. than Katie. They were huge. Yeah, oh my gosh, there yeah. Two of them. The one that I saw, it, so I was working in Frontierland at Magic Kingdom and it was super late at night. Like it was one of the nights that Magic Kingdom was open till 3 a.m. or something like that. Ooh. So we were closing. So it was probably like 3.45 in the morning. Yeah. And we're, um, we're walking through the land and there's this big, there's like a, a river through Frontierland. And there's these posts like by the river. And it was just sitting on one of the posts. I mean, this thing, it had to have been like, I, I, I'm trying to think of like actual measurements, like, like Over bigger like like take two liters two two liters a pop and like put them on top of each other <laughs> wow. and that's like how tall it was it was like massive 
and it was super fluffy, and then it looked at me, but then it saw that we locked eyes, and it flew away. It locked eyes. I tried to get a picture of it, <clears throat> but it flew away too fast. Poor little owl. All right, we should probably get back to podcasts. Sorry, I gotta... <laughs> I'm talking about owls. That's who's, Harry Potter. Who's Harry Potter? I don't know. Mm. Anyway, so Harry's like, he just wants to like let her out of the cage, and Vernon's like, do I look stupid? And he has like food hanging off his mustache. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, uh, yeah, Vernon, you do. Yeah. You do. You do look dumb. Um... Always. Oh, and I just wanted to point out, I put it in the doc. Sorry, Sarah, they are eating bacon this morning, not sausage. Did you do that before I said that? Yes. Yeah. Shut the front door. <laughs> yeah. They just, I didn't even read that when I said that. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I'm not kidding. <laughs> yeah, That's I hilarious. put that in there. And that <laughs> means I'm very predictable. I just said it because people I think just I know love you. sausage. Yeah. We are married, after I all. mean, bacon's good, too. Although bacon from England slash Ireland, ha, oh, it's so good. Alrighty. Anyways. <laughs> Clearly, Sarah likes to talk about food. So Dudley's like wanting some more food. Petunia looks at him and it says, quote, misty eyes when looking at Dudley. When I thought maybe she needs to go to the eye doctor. She's kind of obsessed with him. And I said that is she obsessed with her, quote unquote, normal son? That makes sense. I feel like she craves that. And we talked about that, you know, when we were discussing like her character uh, profile or whatever. But but I feel like he's so he's really not normal at all. (laughs) But so normal that she's like, it's just, just weird. It was a weird way. It was weird words for Joe to put. Yeah. I thought it struck me a little different. <laughs> it takes like proud mama to like a whole new level. Yeah. So she's worried. She's all worried about what he's going to be eating at smeltings. I hate that name. And I know it's horrible. It said that Dudley was so large that his bottom quote drooped over either side of the kitchen chairs like That's my favorite. I think he's gonna be okay at smelting <laughs> yeah and seeing how Vernon turned out I think he's gonna oh, be alright it's just terrible I mean it, and that in itself is a form of child abuse I was just gonna say the were same you really thing. yes yeah yeah, you can't be doing that, you guys. No. Like, that's, that's how kids... That's why, like, the age expectancy in America is going down, because there's so many obese kids. It's true. Also heroin, but, you know, that's a whole separate issue. <laughs> no, the life All right. I just know, went down I again. No, that just, that just jumps. No, that's I all. mean, it's a big thing. But it's I not, mean, yeah, like, cool. if, if you think about the way that Dudley behaves, like, they are cultivating him to be this kind of person. Like, yeah. yeah. He never hears no. He gets what he wants. He overindulges in oh, almost yeah. everything. Yeah. Like with TV, food, yeah. um, video games, video games, um, yeah. his computer, the way that he interacts with his friends, the way he interacts with Harry beating people up mm-hmm. constantly. We find that out later with his little gang or whatever. Yeah. Um, I can't imagine what kind of woman would ever like date or marry him. You know what I mean? Like, oh, she, for sure. First of all, no one's going to be good enough for her little, Duddykins or whatever the hell Diddykins. she Yes. Ditters. A. B. He's going to want someone that's like his mother and nobody would ever want to be like that. You know what I mean? I got you. That would be an interesting, like, I'd, li- I'd like to learn if he did get married. Well, there's an article that just released recently on Pottermore, and I really wish um, <laughs> I would have provided it for this thing. episode, but I... I don't know. I didn't have enough time to kind of research it, but we can do it again at some point. But it's in, in defense of Oh, Dudley. yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, I can pull it up. You want to pull it up? I Actually, you pull that up because I have to, I wanted to read something from the chapter. Um, we always talk about uh, taboo words and whatever. Um, so at this point, Dilly Dudley asks for the frying pan, but he doesn't say please. So Harry says, you know, you didn't say the magic word. And all, I wrote all Hades breaks loose. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so I just wanted to read that. Do it. Because I thought it was worth reading. Past the frying pan. You've forgotten the magic words, said Harry irritably. The effect of this simple sentence on the rest of the family was incredible. Dudley gasped and fell off his chair with a crash that shook the whole kitchen. Mrs. Dursley gave a small scream and clapped her hands to her mouth. Oh, please, Petunia, really? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Dursley jumped to his feet, veins throbbing in his temples. I meant please, said Harry quickly. I didn't mean, and then this is all caps, Vernon. What have I told you, thundered his uncle, spraying spit over the table, about saying the M word in our house. 
But I, how dare you threaten Dudley, roared Uncle Vernon, pounding the table with his fist. I just, I warned you, I will not tolerate mention of your abnormality under this roof. Harry stared from his purple-faced uncle (laughs) to his pale aunt, who was trying to heave Dudley to his feet. All right, said Harry. All right. It's been a while since I heard that bell. Doesn't feel good. Feels so good. Mm -hmm. Feels so good. But like... Every time Petunia acts this way about magic, I just want to say, sit down and shut up because all you're doing is acting. Yeah. She wanted it so bad. She wanted it so bad. And who wouldn't? She probably still wants it. She's yeah. probably jealous of Harry. Mm-hmm. I mean, come on. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And do you want to give like a little scream and be like, oh my gosh, you said magic. <laughs> really? I just hate how like over dramatic Vernon is. That's what gets me with him. Like, oh, you threatened Dudley. It's what? Z- He's zero to sixty. Spit. He. Is, it's like. Yeah. It's crazy. In an instant. He has That's not anger good for issues. Your his yeah. parents are like. He Ooh. definitely has high blood pressure. <laughs> of course, if his face is purple. <laughs> if his face. <laughs> yeah, like probably his high cholesterol too. Yeah. Seriously, though, know. imagine what his parents are like. Oh, my God. I just want to know, because you know he's a product of his environment as well. Yeah. I mean, we all are, truthfully. Yes. Unless, you you know, people people change. People well, change. That's the whole nature um, versus nurture thing. Right. Realistically, like, everybody is a product of their environment, and you're going to, you, you could either learn and grow from it, or you could just be that. You know what I mean? I feel like he's. <clears throat> Vernon is just. I that. feel like he's from a long line of just nasty nut niceness. Yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> And so after this whole thing, it says that um, I just love the words that she uses in this chapter. Uncle Vernon was breathing like a winded rhinoceros after the whole deal. (laughs) And, you know, since Harry has come home, they've been treating him like a bomb that might go off at any moment. He also compares himself to being treated like a dog. Well, the Dursleys also still at this point don't know that he can't Mm -hmm. use magic. Mm. Well, they'll find a rule. They're about to find out, (laughs) but... But so like, it I'm just sure makes that's me why they're treating sad. him that way. Yeah. But even, even though it makes me wonder, like Petunia had to know that he couldn't, wouldn't she? But remember, we think that we might the laws might have changed from changed. when that's from right. when Lily was yeah. in school, definitely because she was doing she stuff was doing at like home. frogs bond and all yeah. that kind of jazz. And but maybe that was like leading. I don't know. Maybe that was after. Maybe that was well. But didn't here. wasn't she turning like f- something into teacups? Yeah, she said something so. Like about I think that yeah. I think that I mean, and laws do change. So like maybe. Yeah. Even though it's not, I mean, realistically, it wasn't that long ago. Well, this is an example. 20 years before. My mom, when she was 18, that was a legal drinking age, so she was allowed to drink. And then while she was in that age range, they changed it to 21, so she couldn't anymore. Yeah. Not that she did. My mom was a total (laughs) goody-goody. But I do remember her saying that. Like, that was a thing. So, you know, it's plausible. Yeah. Sure. Um, I just feel bad because you were talking about, like, him being around at breakfast, I feel like he's so neglected that any kind of interaction mm-hmm. he'll take. Yeah. yeah. Even if it's obviously it's a good thing to point out. Awful. Right. Like that's how abused he is. He would he would rather be verbally abused by these people who loathe him than to continue to be by himself yeah. because he's so lonely. Yeah. No, I completely agree with you. Like thinking like I'd rather them be screaming at me than no one talking to me at all. Mm-hmm. That's even in the first book. Like when he comes home from after hanging out with Hagrid and they don't talk to him for like a whole month and he's like, you'd think it would be great, but like it was kind of depressing. It was cool for him for like the first couple of right. days, I think. And then he got, really I mean, sad. I can't imagine living in a house with three people that, you know, hate you and they're not even talking to you for a whole month. And yeah. then like how, mm-hmm. you know, you welcome any kind of like. Just talk to me. I don't give. I don't care if you're screaming at me and saying horrible things. At least you're talking to me. Right. God, that's so that's sad. sad. Yeah. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I didn't mean to bring, bring all the vibe. Yeah. Bring, bring well, in the vibe. Honestly, down. anytime we're gonna be at number four, Privet Drive, it's gonna suck. Yeah. I know. So. Um, we're getting to happier time. We are. We're well, <laughs> well, maybe not. <laughs> Do we ever until the very end? <laughs> right. But and even then, <laughs> and even then, everybody's uh, done. Um, <laughs> sorry, guys. Spoiler. spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> Jinx. Cokes. <laughs> I want all the cokes. It's been a while since I've earned a coke in you know mm-hmm. in this podcast. Um. So he's just, Harry's thinking about how much he's missing Hogwarts and everything that goes with it, but maybe not so much Snape. 
And we find out that his school things have been locked away once he got home. And I did want to read the dinner party schedule, but if you want to interject with your in defense of Dudley, do you have that pulled up? Yeah. So it's kind of long, so I won't read all of it. Just give us the gist. But it basically starts out saying how um, he was raised. And you mean, you kind of says we can't help. We can't believe we're defending Dudley, but considering his upbringing, we think he deserves a bit of a case. Mm -hmm. Um, And so it says that um, in conclusion, basically from birth, Dudley had been taught that violence and screaming would always allow him to get his own way. Because it talks about Mm -hmm. how his mom had to beat, not beat him, um, battle to get him in the high chair. And then then his dad like liked that he was throwing a temper tantrum. Yep. And then, you know, you see how growing up he um, was very spoiled and threw a fit about how many presents he had on his birthday. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they compare his upbringing to Harry where, you know, Harry's being kept under the cupboard under the stairs and giving him only basic human rights due to their underlying fear of him. And then it was a very different story for Dudley basically being smothered by his parents. He turned into a cookie cutter version of Vernon while Harry didn't. The Mm. Dursley's extreme love could well, could well have contributed to Dudley's horrible, except it says horrid (laughs) privileged attitude. Um, And even Dumbledore seemed to blame them. He's like, you uh, have never treated Harry as a son. He has known nothing but neglect and often cruelty at your hands. The best that can be said is that he has at least escaped the appalling damage you have inflicted upon the unfortunate boy sitting between you. And that's from um, Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. Go, Dumbledore, go. And then it basically says... good part of Dumbledore's... Hey, I love him. Yeah. And then it, it kind of says, like, um, how being attacked by the Dementors changed things. Yes. Um, and I a thousand percent agree. Yes. And it says, when the two Dementors went for Harry, Dudley got caught in the mix. The experience left him completely confused and traumatized, leaving Harry to save his life and carry him home. Mm-hmm. At first, we were furious to see that this horrendous experience hadn't been enough for Dudley to say thank you. He blamed Harry the second he got back home to mom and dad. But something did seem to shift in Dudley after that, just not straight away. And yeah. then it talks about in Deathly Hallows how he went on a bit of a U-turn. Um, and so, you know, it started with a cup of tea outside of um, Harry's yes. room. Oh. And then Harry didn't really think much of it. But we would later realize that this was Dudley's idea of an olive branch. And it didn't stop there. There was also the handshake. Yeah, because originally Harry thought it was like a booby trap set mm-hmm. by him mm-hmm. to be mm-hmm. like a jerk. Yeah. But it wasn't. You guys... People change. Mm-hmm. And I think something clicked definitely. I mean, this is totally off topic, but after that Dementor attack, I think in his head, once he got, you know, out of that Dementor fog or whatever, he knew that something was going to be different. And his initial reaction was to do what he always does. Yeah. Which is to blame Harry and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. But he had to grow out of that way of thinking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and then there's a quote from Deathly Hallows, and it says, Dudley gently released himself from his mother's clutches and walked towards Harry, who had to repress an urge to threaten him with magic. Then Dudley held out his large pink hand. Blimey, Dudley, said Harry over Petunia's renewed sobs. Did the Dementors blow a different personality into you? Dunno, muttered Dudley. See you, Harry. Mm. Yeah. And it's then like Petunia crazy. goes on to flaunt over him. and yeah. Oh, Ugh. Dudley. I think Deedly Stiggle is like, what or whoever the I can't remember. I think that right. yeah it, he goes with them. Mm-hmm. But does yes. he say that? Does and he then, uh, like mo- like be like what are you talking about or is it the woman? I can't remember. Can't remember her name either. We're not there yet. We're not oh, there yet, you guys. Been, I can't remember every detail. It says he. Uh, I don't know how to say it. Hesta Hesta Jones. Jones. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes. She she called them out. She's like, but you know he he didn't do anything. Yeah. 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 All right. Cool. All right. So I'm gonna read this little. Uh, little bit about our dinner party schedule which is something that i always remember from the movies yeah yeah Mm -hmm. okay so i think we should run through the schedule one more time said uncle vernon we should all be in position at eight o'clock petunia you will be in the lounge said petunia promptly waiting to welcome them graciously to our home (laughs) good good and dudley i'll be waiting to open the door (laughs) dudley put on his the door the door a foul simpering smile may i take your coats mr mrs mason they'll love him cried aunt petunia rapturously excellent dudley and uncle vernon said oh said uncle vernon then he rounded on harry and you i'll be in my bedroom making no noise and pretending i'm not there 
But in the movie, he says, pretending I don't, I don't exist. exist. <laughs> I love how he kind of almost has a slight smirk on his face in yeah. the movie. It's like mm-hmm. sassy yes. Harry. Yes. He's a little sassy and Harry. And his voice is changing. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. I, I could probably do his voice really well right now. You probably could. <laughs> you don't Cracks and all. <laughs> Um, exactly, said Uncle Vernon nastily. I will lead them into the lounge, introduce you, Petunia, pour them drinks. At 8.15, I'll announce dinner, said Aunt Petunia. And Dudley, you'll say, may I take you through to the dining room, Mrs. Mason? And Dudley offering his fat arm to the to an invisible woman. My perfect little gentleman, sniffed Aunt Petunia. Sniffed Aunt Petunia. Are you on the verge of tears because your son is being an actor? Yes. Creep. Um, and you said Uncle Vernon viciously to Harry I'll be in my room making no noise and pretending I'm not there said Harry dully precisely now we should aim to get in a few good compliments at dinner Petunia any ideas then we go into the golfer joke and you know Harry's fighting back the urge to laugh because (laughs) Dudley says that he wants to write an essay about a hero and he wants so to write about good. Mr. Mason. This was too much for Aunt Petunia because she burst into tears. I can't stand her, you guys. As nope, doing this reread just makes me not like her so much more. And finally, Harry says for a final time, I'll be in my room making no noise and pretending I'm not there. To write, you will. I don't know why I closed my thing because I need it later. But. For effect. <laughs> yeah, it was for effect. <laughs> so that's our uh, dinner party schedule. Yeah. 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 It's very so, time oriented. Jeez. <clears throat> I can't stand these people. <laughs> so <laughs> I always liked at the beginning of every book how JK would kind of do like a recap. A recap. A recap. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to read her little recap about Harry's life so far. So do it to it. Harry looked nothing like the rest of the family. Uncle Vernon was large and necklace with an enormous black mustache. Aunt Petunia was horse-faced and bony. Dudley was blonde, pink, and porky. Harry, on the other hand, was small and skinny with brilliant green eyes and jet black hair. Whoa! That was always untidy. (laughs) Black? He wore round glasses, and on his forehead was a thin lightning-shaped scar. It was this scar that made Harry so particularly unusual, even for a wizard. This scar was the only hint of Harry's very mysterious past, of the reason he had been left on the Dursley's doorstep 11 years before. At the age of one year old, Harry had somehow survived a curse from the greatest dark sorcerer of all time, Lord Voldemort, whose name most witches and wizards still feared to speak. Don't say his name. (laughs) Harry's parents had died in Voldemort's attack, but Harry had escaped with his lightning scar, and somehow, nobody understood why, Voldemort's power had been destroyed the instant he had failed to kill Harry. (laughs) It's always some sort of um, rendition of that every beginning of the book. Yes, it is. But only through... Oh, only through like It's only through like a certain amount. Is it only through three? I think you're right. Because four starts... Oh, well, I don't know. Maybe after the first chapter. I don't don't know. Can I do a disclaimer real quick? Yeah. Since we are recording at my house, this is Tiffany, you are probably going to, more than once, hear some Fozzie Bear barks. What are you doing? Because he like he's very mouthy and vocal when it he comes to odd to sounds. He on the podcast, too. He's on, he's on the other podcast. He's sitting next to the are Hufflepuff. Are you serious? The Hufflepuff is sitting next to the Hufflepuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Shout out to uh, Matt Brady, who just called me. <laughs> How do I mute that? I don't know. <laughs> We're going to keep that in. (laughs) Shout out to Matt. Shout out to Matt. Can I mute my computer without it doing weird stuff? I have no idea. I'm not going to do it just in case. I'm going to. Just in case. I'm going to do not disturb this. So moving on. (laughs) So that was JK's little recap about Harry's life. Um, Just kind of like reminding you what happened in the first book. Or if you crazily picked up the second book first, you know. You would know. Tiffany, didn't you read the second book first? I believe she did. She said no, no. but it is her favorite. I think she just read it a lot. Mm. I don't know. So anyway, exactly (laughs) one year ago from today, Hogwarts had written to Harry. um, And JK explains how Harry now goes to Hogwarts where he and his car are famous. So this actually, we find out, is Harry's birthday. But the Dursleys, as per usual, have 
forgotten it. But he does say that, I guess, the Dursleys don't normally completely forget it, but, like, he never expects presents or cake or anything like that, but, like, they'll normally acknowledge it. However, this year, there's just, like, nothing. They just... Yeah. So, like, comparing his birthday this year to last year, last year is the day that he discovered he was a wizard. He gets to go to Hogwarts, and then this year he's lonely because none of his new friends are writing to him. The Dursleys hadn't even remembered that today was his birthday, and he has to go up to his room to pretend that he doesn't exist anymore. So... There is a moment, though, for like an inkling of a second where Harry thinks that they might remember, but then they're just discussing Vernon's party, yeah. dinner Poor party gets for his work. hopes up so high for like, just for like, like a daring, daring not believe it, you know, and yeah. then nothing. So Harry's job for the evening is to be in his room, making no noise, pretending that he's not there. That's what I do every year on my birthday. <laughs> That's sad. <laughs> do you want me to wait for Tiffany to get back? No. No. Right. Fine. So Harry yeah. Harry decides he's had enough being inside. Or no, I'm sorry. Aunt Petunia <laughs> tells him to just like go and do something. So he goes out into the back. Bye. And he's sitting in the backyard and he slumps down on the garden bench. And it's so sad because he like sings happy birthday to himself just outside by himself. It's, so it's heartbreaking. Like, just yeah. all you see is happy birthday to me, dot, 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 happy birthday to me, dot, dot, dot. And you can just hear it. Like it's depressing. The lonely teardrop falling for his <laughs> <eye>. <laughs> right. And it says in there he has never felt so lonely. He's gotten no cards, no presents, and he has to pretend that he doesn't exist for that whole night. So he hasn't heard from Ron or Hermione or even Hagrid. He misses them so much. He, I guess he's thought about breaking Hedwig out of her cage like a million times, but then he'll get expelled and then he'll never see his friends if he has friends. Hmm. Um, but reminder, the Dursleys still don't know that he can't use magic outside of school. Hmm. And sadly, Harry even mentions that he wishes he could see Draco just to make sure that this wasn't all a dream. Yeah. It's so sad. Like reading that, and I was like, "Oh my god!" Like the fact that you, like the person you probably hate the most besides the Dursleys, like you're willing to. I'd rather see him than like nobody from yeah. the Wizarding World. And I just thought of this to compare. Like he, he wouldn't mind seeing Draco, but before he mentioned, like, eh, I don't, I still don't miss Snape though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Harry's lost in his thoughts while he's sitting out there, and he's all sad. And then he realizes that the hedge is staring back at him. That was always one of my favorite lines in the book. So there's two enormous green (laughs) eyes staring back at him from the hedge. But Dudley comes out to tease Harry, and the eyes disappear. But, Sarah, are you covering the fake magic? I mean, I kind of just talk about it a little bit. I did think it's funny, though, that Harry, or Dudley's like, I know what day it is. And Harry's like, oh, you finally learned the days of the week, huh? <laughs> Sassy Harry. Yeah. All right. Um, the Paros is ready, and it's delicious. I took a bite. <laughs> <laughs> You're taunting me. Sorry. I'm not sorry. <laughs> okay. So as uh, Katie was saying how Harry gets um, basically teases. Nope. <laughs> Dudley teases Harry for, like, saying... It's his birthday. Oh, why are you laughing? He's you're like, blah, blah, blah. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I can never talk right. So yeah. Dudley, um, he's mad at Dudley because he basically is calling him out for all his insecurities about Hogwarts and how none of his friends are talking to him. So Harry is already feeling incredibly lonely as we've discussed. And he's thinking almost like this could have all been a, a crazy dream. And Dudley comes out and he's like, yeah, it's your birthday. And you have no friends. Like, it's just... So it's making him even more lonely. Just rub his face in it. And so really the only power Harry um, has in this house is his threat to use magic because they don't know that he's not allowed. <laughs> so uh, the Dursleys have no idea. And once he's, a, so he literally says jiggery pokery, hocus pocus, squiggly wiggly, which makes Jiggery-pokery. me laugh. <laughs> Jiggery pokery. I just see um, him like with his hands like squiggly wiggly. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I've read it. (laughs) And I just think it's funny, like, to me, like, jiggery pokery means nothing. Swiggly wiggly means nothing. But, like, hocus pocus, like, that to me, like, when you see, like, someone that's, like, a magician or, like, especially when they're doing stuff for, like, kids and, like, sleight of hand stuff and the goo it's hocus pocus like i actually think of real magic when i hear that i just think of bet midler i was gonna say it's also a phenomenal movie 
Um, so he, Harry gets a small piece of pleasure from freaking Dudley out, but it's short lived because then his aunt gives him days worth of chores that need to be done that day. Um, and I th- said, Petunia first tries to hit him with a pan, and I wonder how many times she's physically threatened him. Yeah, because that's I'm a good point. guarantee you that's not the first time, or even Vernon, because clearly we know that he has more anger issues than she does. Yeah. What? Um, <laughs> and so <laughs> what? <laughs> she promises that he won't eat until he's finished. So he had to clean the windows, wash the car, mow the lawn, trim the flower beds, prune and water the roses, and repaint the garden bench. Repaint a bench too. Jeez. And like, I wonder what time it is, right? Well, I guess they just ate well, breakfast. So, yeah. Uh, so it's probably pretty early. Yeah. So he regretted rising to Dudley's bait, but he's worried that he really doesn't have any friends at Hogwarts and even thinks he wished he, um, they could see the famous Harry Potter now. And it shows you he doesn't think he's anything special. And that's a feeling you see that he has throughout the books, like later on when he's even talking about, like, oh, mm-hmm. I'm just lucky kind of stuff, you know, yeah. with how he's always he, saying yeah. that. Um, and he's finally allowed back inside the house at 7.30 and is told to eat quickly and stay quiet in his room. Um, so he sees the pudding on top of the fridge and there's a pork loin roasting in the oven, mm. but he's only given two slices of bread and some cheese to eat for dinner. So if you think about it, all day long, he's given, he had breakfast and a measly dinner and he... He did all that work. Yeah. And that's, so like, doesn't like, get a lunch. not enough. <laughs> and then do you think he was drinking water at all that day? Do you think she let him back in the house? So the poor kid's probably also dehydrated and is hot and he's sweating and he's in the sun all day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so he's basically treated like a house elf. But Ooh, we'll find out what that is soon. A what? Um, and I, it's interesting. Aunt Petunia is wearing a salmon colored cocktail dress. This is ding it. S- ding salmon. It. Yep. Yep. And then I said, <laughs> it's interesting because Umbridge herself wears a lot of mm. pink. Mm. And so I even, they recently came out with an article, um, about the meaning of colors. I mean, there's some kind cause it talks about, um, it does talk about pink and how, Umbridge is um, associated with it, and they talk a little bit about. Um, I feel like these women that Petunia. are trying to portray themselves as like good yes. people are wearing pink because it's so nice. Yes, so it awesome. says it's a color rightly or wrongly associated with girlish, sweet associations, and it's perhaps this is why the, the Umbridge uses to project like those images mm-hmm. where she's sweet mm-hmm. and nice mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. like. Mm-hmm. That's exactly what Petunia's trying to... I'm mm. the perfect little housewife. Little Look at my lady. husband. Look at my perfect child. Yeah. Yes. Oh, you evil, evil women. Yes. Mm. And how mm. brilliant that um, JK can, like, do that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Just wonder if she had an... Ex- I know that she based Umbridge off of a professor? Off a real person, yeah, but she's yeah. never but it, said who but it was she, said, she, like, didn't... She right, didn't but she took, her to, yeah. she took her to an extreme. It yeah. was someone mm-hmm. she just did, you know, she disliked a lot. But yeah. but obviously she wasn't, like, Umbridge, because Umbridge yes. is whew, uh, vile and evil. evil. But I just... Literally evil. I wonder... <laughs> I wonder. I just, yeah. And so Harry mm. walks into his room after a long, hard day's work with little to no food mm. and no water, mm-hmm. and he's ready to fall into his bed, but somebody's in it. Who's what? like, who are you? It's like the little bear, somebody's sleeping in my bed. <laughs> <laughs> I think about that every time when I was Do like, you really? <laughs> yes. You're really funny. You're a dork, but I love yeah. it anyway. Cool. I wonder who it is. I don't know. We shall see next time. Maybe it's me. Maybe I was in his bed. Guys, my leg hurts because I fell Dead on it silence. today. Oh, yeah. Megan fell She didn't today. just fall. She slipped in the snow. <laughs> and she went, what? What? But now my, like, thigh hurts. I'm sorry. Let's do some lightning bolt questions. I don't have any oh, prepared. I know. Always have one. I know. I'm a terrible person. We depend person. on you. We depend on Sarah. I depend <laughs> on Sarah. Let's be real. <laughs> she always says she's like, I don't prepare them. I just got one in my head. I think that Tiffany's slacking because of her prego brain. So <laughs> that's 100% true. <laughs> yeah. Who had to do the outline this week? Sarah. Yeah. <laughs> but it's also partly because I we were together when we were doing them. You were. And um, I wrote the notes and she's like, I can't read that. And I was like, Dude, I could not read her hand. Neither can I. <laughs> <laughs> All right. My question. Question. Is, question. Yes. So you are throwing a dinner party. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh. Give it to what me. are you serving? Pot roast. <laughs> and no, nobody getting the same answer. I want, I want an appetizer. I want a main, and I want a pudding, like a dessert snack pack. Correct. Okay. okay. Snack pack. 
what do I, what app do I really like? Oh, I love bruschetta. Oh yeah, love that's a good bruschetta. That's a nice, that's a nice one. That's yeah, a good yeah. uh, dinner party. And then pot roast because Avi is my fave. And it was if, and if Tiffany's cooking, that's all she can cook because it's in a crock pot. And it, I will say it is good. It's good. Mm-hmm. It's good. Uh, t- t- snack packs. If you want a pudding, <laughs> that's, okay. No, no, no. That's how, no. That's how this American is gonna take it. You're eating pudding. You, you are trying to impress your husband's new business associate, and you're gonna serve them snack packs. Well, yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh! It's well, okay. she would serve you them like little it. mandrakes, like she did to us yeah. at the feast. You can eat it with your pinky out. Oh my gosh. <laughs> You might hear my stomach start rumbling because I'm hungry. <laughs> no. <laughs> I can feel it rumbling. I could make my pudding cake. I make pudding cake. That's just good. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Is, Is it like, like the kind where you cake? poke it? Like a poke cake? <gasps> Something I don't bitten. know what that means. Oh. No, but literally, it's devil's food cake mix yeah. and cook and serve chocolate pudding. That's all you do. And then you bake it like the cake says. You don't put eggs in it or anything. And mm. it is like... Uh, all right, that Megan. was a good sound. If you didn't good. understand, so is mac and cheese an appetizer or a uh, mac and cheese? That's would like be a side wait, dish. Whole, homemade mac and cheese. Still, I think okay. love. that could be like a. But oh, what you if we can do like whatever you want? Mac and cheese as what? like a meal. You know, how loaded mac and cheese. Yeah, no, you like I, put like bacon and no. stuff in there. Yeah, no, I like my mac appetizer. and cheese. They have noodles and cheese. Whatever. Appetizer would be bacon wrapped crackers. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> Such a pain yeah. in the. Oh, but, but they're, so, they're good. so good. I'm the making them for space. Christmas at my mom's house. I just made them for my Christmas party. That I got the little snowflake Ritz crackers because they're cute. Yeah. They are cute. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that bacon wrapped okay. crackers. They are delicious. Give me an entree. Uh, entree so would be ham with a side of mac and cheese because those go so good together. I would Do agree. They really? Yeah. Oh, yes. Ham and mac are and cheese. Are you a ham fan? Okay. I'm a ham fan. If it's a Falder's ham, if my mom makes it, and so if that's it's the no. day it's made. I don't See, like I'll leftovers, eat, man. I will Not eat, on ham. I will eat ham. Oh, I'll eat ham like for days. Like I'm a, if I'm I a have, ham sandwich kind of if girl. If I, I don't have like ham that. on an Italian sub, which I can't eat anymore for the moment. And then pudding. Mm. You know you want a snack pack. You know you want it. What's a good dessert that I make? All of them. Yeah. Ooh. Pie. Apple pie. Oh, hummingbird cake. Ooh, hummingbird Ooh, What's cake? hummingbird cake? Oh, we'll have to make it for you. You better not eat birds. No. Yeah, it's like you, eating you, snitches. You catch the hummingbirds. Yeah. You're do, you know, wait, do you know that chicken, <laughs> chicken and turkey, they're birds? Oh, yeah. Yeah, but they're not cute <laughs> birds. <laughs> Chickens are cute. Turkeys Did you see that video of that chicken? Did you see that video of that chicken with its video head on, on that lady's shoulder? With its owner. Oh, my God. It was so, so cute. I'm, my sister's a chicken lady. She has names so for all cute. of them. And okay, so yeah, I would make hummingbird weird. cake, which is, for anybody who doesn't know, it's like a spice cake with uh, walnuts and cream cheese icing. I'm down. And then you put like walnuts on the yeah. icing. Yeah, I'll do it. I take a bite, but I don't think. I Do you like know it. how to make coffee Good. cake? I'm not. I'm weird about nuts. Yeah. Will you make like me a coffee, coffee cake? cake? Like the cinnamony kind? Yeah. I, whatever. Yeah. I haven't had it in years, and I really want it. Oh sure. <sighs> Welcome to Tiffany, pregnant because I she think wants little to eat Swisher everything really and expects <laughs> us to make it for her. Does your little Swisher want coffee cake? Yeah. Will that get me coffee cake? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I call it the little nugget because that's what it I is call a nugget. A little nugget. It's a little nug. nugget. Katie, uh, I would have buffalo chicken dip as an app. It's upstairs. You remember, you have to make these things, not your she wife. She can make buffalo chicken dip. Not, Wait, not what? Saying it's I don't, hard. What? I have Probably. to make these things. I know I can. Well, you can make paro. So you just made one. Yeah. What did I say was my appetizer? Bruschetta. I've never yeah. made bruschetta. It's so it's easy. easy. You, you just chop do... up some tomatoes. Yeah, and you put it on toasted bread. Tomatoes. <laughs> I would then have and you buy some crostini. Oh my <laughs> god! And you probably need Can a little Megan balsamic help? vinegar. Sure. No. I would then have pizza. You can't tell me what to do. <laughs> yeah, you then, would. Yeah, you then would. For dessert, I would have a Dairy Queen ice cream cake. Ooh. Yes. Oh. What did it say? That Megan can't eat this cake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not, yeah. wait, not for Megan. What did not it say? For Megan. Yeah. Not for Megan. Not for Megan. a little puppy so on it. What was, oh, there. Was, so Megan and Katie are cat people. Obviously, yeah, we, we haven't noticed. Well, we didn't get the dog because of that. What did we? I thought we did. No, we just deleted that one the best because I think it had the most frosting on it. Oh, so there was a, do- that a, a dog. Dis- that is a deciding factor. On yeah. this cake, and we had them right not for Megan on it. So our friends came up, and they'd never <laughs> had a dairy. Yeah, they'd never had a Dairy Queen ice cream cake. Which so I was like, it's we second have to- breakfast, wasn't it? Correct. Yeah. yeah. And so I just feel like we talk about them a lot. 
But legitimately, we were sitting there just at the table and we're like talking about well, Dairy no, Queen. No, because I was saying, like, I'm like, had it. I was mind blown. And I was yeah. like, well, and I did tell them, I'm like, if you don't like it, we're no longer friends. And so the two of them and Tiffany and I went to Dairy Queen to get it. And Megan was having like stomach issues. So she was staying away from anything that tasted good, basically. And so she was Dairy, yeah. that's why. Yeah. And so we wrote and we had it. The girl um, at Dairy Queen <laughs> right on the cake, not for Megan because she couldn't eat any of it. Guess what? We're not. I still ate some. We're not jerk. We love each other. We just do this. Is, this is our, People our love have to language. understand. Yeah. Like, we're mean to each other, but we don't mean it. Like it's we jokes. It's just how we are. But it was pretty Somebody funny. Somebody asked us on our Facebook page oh, what? a um, lightning bolt, lightning round question. And right she, now? No, it was a couple days ago. She said, ooh, here's a question. Well, for I, the, I could answer my own question and oh, while you search ahead. for yeah, it. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> answer, answer it. What um, we, hit me with an app. I would probably do... Hit me with your What's best a good app? app? Ooh, you know what I would make mm-hmm. is that um, spinach and artichoke dip. Oh, yes. yes. Yeah. I also so like good. your no bean dip. Oh yeah, I make that a lot too. It's very good. It's just like chili dip. I don't oh, know well, why we yeah, call it no, that. We, no, <laughs> we no call beans. it no bean dip because so it's this dip and you get it's so easy. Um, you take cream cheese, a layer of cream cheese, like and almost like a pie dish, but it's one that can go in the <laughs> and microwave. Beef sauteed with peas and onions. <laughs> <laughs> and then you take. Um, there's a it's a brand called Hormel and they have this Hormel chili with no beans. So it's like a chili like basically is what it is. And then you put cheddar cheese on top. We call it no bean dip because you have to use the Hormel no beans with it. And that's why we call it no bean dip. But it's so good. You just pop it in the microwave till it's bubbly. Yeah, pop it Delish. right out on the till it's bubbly. Um what would I make for my main? Maybe um like roasted chicken or something, mm-hmm. or even like um, I do make a good mac and cheese, but I probably chicken, chicken with like potatoes and yeah. maybe Brussels sprouts because those are my, oh, one of my yes, favorite vegetables. Yes, yes. All roasted in the oven, lots yes, of garlic, yes, onions, Ooh, yes, even yes, maybe some bacon. Oh my gosh, let's, let's, let's hurry this up. And then we gotta eat this I first. make, um, and this is funny because I don't actually like it. I make a really good chocolate cake, but I usually make it with peanut butter frosting and a chocolate peanut butter ganache on top for my sister's birthday because those are her favorite things. I'm not a chocolate and peanut butter fan. Sorry, everybody. Um, but it, the cake is really good. Like, that's a good Blast chocolate cake. for me. I know. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, but it's pretty. That's probably what I'd make. All right. Let's think of other questions. Other questions. Questions. I haven't found it. If you were in Harry's position, Mm -hmm. so you're sad, you're lonely, you're 12, you think you have no friends, get get yourself in the mindset, right? Be lonely. Who would be one person that you wouldn't want to see from Hogwarts? Like, you know how he said, don't want to see Snape? Who would you be like, I I don't want to see them? Filch. Snape or Filch, yeah. Hmm. Filch. Okay. Yeah. I'd say probably the same. Really? Now, yeah. That's funny. Now, who would you want if you could only pick one person that you went to school with? So you're Harry's age. So anybody in that entire, that is in school, like that he met at Hogwarts, who would you want to see? Ron. I'm Harry, right? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ron. Um, I want to say Neville. I'd want to see Hagrid. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Good call. The guy would need like a good fatherly hug you know yeah <laughs> father figurely hug i think ron would make me laugh and happy yeah, yeah. but you could also pick the twins they're good chuckle yeah but they're not That's my true. best friend yeah well they're gonna be your brother-in-laws yeah but i don't know that yet spoiler spoiler well actually only one is <gasps> <gasps> oh that hurts <laughs> oh dang oh. man poor one out <laughs> <laughs> have we ever talked about that like I don't know if it's technically a meme, but it's basically like how um, Lily, it's like that thing where it's oh, like Lily. even talk about it. It makes me want to cry every time. Oh, she's yeah. Like, she's yeah. like, oh, I'll take care you. of him. Yes. Yeah. Oh, my God. It may make you start crying now. Okay. Well, don't cry. Jeez. <clears throat> you know, You've I'm very You've taken care of my son all these years. Yes. I'll take care of yours. Yes. Oh, heart heart wrenching. Oh. Mm. Mm. Make it stop. I don't really have any questions for this one because this chapter made me so angry. I blocked <laughs> Questioning it. Ooh, I got another one. What? What? On the spot, make up some um, magic words. Oh, like fake magic. Uh, God. Bibbidi bobbidi. No, <laughs> that's not made up. <laughs> 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 
Snorfus Dorfus. <laughs> Poopity hoopity. <laughs> pop pop. Pop pop. <laughs> Swish and flick. No. <laughs> Silence. So dead quiet. What I would- found the question. Okay. Okay, what is it? Oh Who's the biggest Harry Potter fan? Oh, oh yeah. We, we've discussed this. It's, yeah. it's Florence. Florence. <laughs> she just thinks that Harry Potter is just wonderful. I know. I just know some people aren't. Like on social media, so I thought it would be yes. funny to bring it up here. But yeah, we did say my answer was Katie because of the. See, uh, I think it might be you. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, oh, here's the thing. Here's the thing about all of us. We all like it in different yes. ways yes. and for different reasons. Yes. Yes. So, like, like me and Katie literally go to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter like six times a year. Tiffany has read the books the most. True. And then Sarah quotes the movies like none other. Yeah, we're all. You know, it's and just then like Katie writes fanfic. Different. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, we all have like our we all reads fan of fiction. <laughs> we wow. can't talk about that. Hello, Sarah. <laughs> like so, I mean, it, it all to each and We're every one. In our own talk, ways. Yes. Yeah. Well, and we've talked about our Harry Potter stories, and you know, we've talked about our own <laughs> like issues because everybody, you know, you talk about how it makes you happier and like when you're anxious and when you're depressed and you like yeah. go back to Harry Potter and I think every one of us always has, there to welcome you home. Yeah. John Williams, me yeah. in college, man, yeah. that made me feel at ease. It, like, yeah. Not that I was anxious or anything like that. It just makes you, Homesick. it takes, it takes you to a place. Yeah. It mm-hmm. takes you home. That's why I literally take love Hogwarts picking all of the music for um, mine and Katie's wedding. Mm-hmm. Cause I used all of like the orchestral Harry Potter music for, yeah. Everything. I mean, like us walking down the aisle, us exiting, us mm-hmm. it's the en- the entrances, the entrance music for like the reception and dinner music. Like it was all the orchestral Harry Potter music, and it was just so I loved it. perfect. It's I kept cool. I kept my butterbeer bottle from your wedding. By the way, it's on my shelf. Did you? Yeah. It's cool that we those have sounds one. and songs like get to mean something even more mm-hmm. to me and you now. Yeah, you know? like whenever yeah. we're in the Wizarding World and the song that like I walked down the aisle to comes on. It it, it takes always, you to Hogwarts yeah. and it yeah. takes you to your wedding. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like this is the one thing. Like I, that's why I love like their music. You hear it yeah. and you automatically know like that's Harry Potter and like even mm-hmm. with Star Wars, like that's Star Wars. Right. Like, uh, it's, it's just all John Williams. Oh my He's god! Genius. Yes, love it's amazing. I love here. I mean, he didn't do all of the Harry Potter ones, but like the iconic, the iconic. Yeah. Yeah. Ones, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, love it. Yep. That's none of my business. <laughs> <laughs> any other nice. questions? I don't have any questions. No, I, think I we stink. Can go to the fans. You were the queen of questions. <gasps> the question can I, queen. Can I get a clown? A clown? A clown? I'll give me a clown. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Katie, fan story. Yeah. Hey, do you have All any right. chapstick? Not right now. Ugh. How would you say this last name? <sighs> Very bon- careful. Bonsal. So this fan story is from Alicia. Bonsal. Alicia. Bonsal. Alicia. Alicia. Sorry if I. Just you know we your can't name. talk, so. Yep. You know. So she says, my grandmother gave me the first two novels <coughs> after she had purchased them, and I did not get into them. <laughs> <laughs> I did not immediately read them, but maybe a couple of months later, was bored one day and picked up Sorcerer's Stone. I believe I was ten years old at this time, so Ooh, same as us. Perfect age. Definitely prior to the first movie coming out. I read the book in two days and Chamber of Secrets probably about the same. From then on, I was hooked. I read the following novels as soon as they came out. My next, pro- my next prominent memory is the first movie coming out. The theater was absolutely packed and we had to sit in the first row. Ugh. Ugh. This line made me laugh. I distinctly remember the smell of buttered popcorn and sweaty children. <laughs> Young to the first, gross to the second. Gross but magical all the same. Yes. For, for a period of time during my adolescence, novels and movies were coming out intermittently, and I felt very connected with the characters. Yeah, that's me. Because we're similar ages. Like I was growing up with the characters at the same time. Harry Potter was a big part of my adolescence and still is a big part of me today. When I met my now husband, he had never seen a Potter movie. I was baffled. What? He's a bit older than me and sort of missed the hype, I suppose. That's so sad. <laughs> it's never too late. One of the first trips we took as a couple together was to Orlando, and I made him watch all the movies before going to the Wizarding World. He absolutely loved it, and that gave me joy. So it's been about 17 years since I became a Harry Potter fan, and I obviously still love to read them, listen to other people talk about them. Thanks. <laughs> and talk, to, talk about them myself. I'm not a super expert or know-it-all, but I love this series dearly, and it is truly... It truly is a part of me. I know this is long, and you don't have to read it on the podcast or anything, <laughs> but I wanted to share. 
Too bad we did it anyway. We're going to read it all. Yep. I love that story. Mm-hmm. It's very good. I just want to tell you that I have a, I remembered about my book. Yeah. So we're reading Chamber of Secrets, and I bought my book on Amazon. Mm-hmm. By the way, thank you, Alicia, for your story. I, I, like your story. <laughs> I just want to get this in because I think it's so funny. So I bought this on Amazon for real cheap, um, and nobody, like, this book was brand new. Like, nobody had opened it, and I found um, at the very last, like, cover, back cover, it says, Dear Timmy, hope you enjoy reading this book. With all my love, Grandma. Thanks, Yay! Timmy yep. and Grandma. <laughs> Thank you. And, you know, I appreciate reading it. So <laughs> I don't want to sell it on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, it was brand new. Nobody had ever opened it. I was like, oh, that's so sad. So sad. Poor grandma. But well, she you. got him a great gift. Yeah, true. Thank you, Alicia. We told all of us here at this table relate to that because yes. we all grew up with the characters as well. So yeah. we totally know where you're coming Tiffany's from. Tiffany's a little older. <laughs> She's going to be 30 <laughs> this year. <gasps> Whoa. Whoa. Out there, <laughs> way, I say that she's way older than the rest of us. The next oldest is me. <laughs> Y'all turds. We love you. Yeah, yeah. you better. We do. I expect a well, large party. Let's be honest. Now that she's having a child, we don't care about Tiffany anymore. We love the nugget. Just the nugget. The yeah. little nugget. Just a little special. I'm so excited. And I'm hungry. All right. The media is of social. Make sure you join yeah. our group on Facebook. Uh, you know, use it to discuss each episode, post cool Harry Potter memes, do whatever you guys want to. You guys have been killing as long as it it's Potter. As long <laughs> as it's Potter related, obviously. Um, so it's a great community. We love talking to everybody there. It's super fun. I love it. Um, go find us on Facebook. That's where we're most active. So make sure that you like our page to get all the latest info. We post whenever the episodes are live. Um, we post when our vlogs are live. Uh, and then... On Facebook, we are Swish and Flick Podcast. So if you also want to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Tumblr, you can find us at Swish Flick Cast. Uh, and then <laughs> this is like really segregated, guys. I'm sorry. I don't know why I like can't read it properly. Um, find us and follow us on Patreon. So by supporting us on Patreon, it helps us to be able to provide you guys more content. Thanks to our patrons, we have been able to purchase a vlogging camera. Ew. Actually, two. I mean, I haven't ordered it yet because I'm really bad, but like I'm gonna, I swear. (laughs) You're terrible. (laughs) I just keep forgetting. Um, And then we've also been able to now start our weekly vlogs. We've been able to obtain our web address. Mm -hmm. I swear me and Katie are working on that. It's happening. They're patient. Our fans are patient. Yes, they Uh, are. It's a lot of work. But Mm -hmm. that's okay. It's fun. So. Um, so head on over to patreon.com forward slash swish flick cast and then you can support your favorite Potter podcast. Your favorite. Us. Absolute favorite. Uh, you can also follow yes. your swish and flick hosts on social media if you would like as well. On Twitter and Instagram, I am Meg's Mouse Tales. Sarah is. <laughs> <laughs> nothing. Nothing. I want her to say it because she didn't. She needs to say it. Cause somebody called us out. They said we were like making they, fun they, of you. They called me out. I didn't even start doing that. It was Tiffany. It was me. <laughs> we're not all good fun. making fun well, of people. I mean, but at the same time, we make fun of each other in a loving way. Like oh, That's yeah. our relationship. Like, honestly, it wasn't even funny. making fun of it. It just came out of my mouth that way when we were recording one day. And Next it just. Mouse Tales. So really, See, if, we're making, if we're making fun of anyone, it's. Tiffany. It's me. <laughs> yeah. And I'm cool with it. <laughs> Sarah is at O'Malley. That's three H's. O'Malley. You have to say it. And Katie is at Skaterade 7. And then Tiffany, because she's happy. lame, is only on Twitter. Like and she's at Tiff Swish underscore flick. Tiffany, you're one of the coolest people I know. Don't mm-hmm. lie to her. <laughs> She's not. She is super active on her Twitter, though, so she makes up for not being on Instagram. I'm way active on the Twitter. The Twitter. The Twitter. Hey guys, it's been a while since I've said this. I can't wait. Are you ready? I'm you ready. Said it last week. Yeah, but it's but all the together. Same. Oh my god. All right. So that concludes this week's episode. Thank you so much for listening, and don't let the muggles get you down. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Megan's gonna cut that because you know why? I'm pregnant and I get what I want. <laughs> <gasps> Amazing! Just my voice! <laughs>
I might have to get flower. I don't want a big tattoo on my ankle, but I think I'm going to have to get one. Mm, you have to go. cover that up. <laughs> I'm going to see what they can do. I don't do. want you to cover him up. I want you to just make him a little thicker and straighten out your lines. I think Jen, he would Jen look better if he was, got filled in. That's what I yeah, think I might have to do. So Jen was like, be cute. Yeah. Um, she goes, well, it kind of looks like like a little kid drawing. <laughs> She's like, it's charming. <laughs> just say your just say my baby did it. Like after the baby's born, be like, hey, look at this uh, two-month-old did. <laughs> Talent, man. Right? Talent. 